All right. Good morning. Morning, Claire. So today we're doing an interview with Dave Marzano. I am a little bit fangirling <laughs> for the GU. So for anyone watching who doesn't know, the Gentlewoman's Union is a multi-industry support and mentorship group for women who are driven and professional. And we're just doing these interviews to showcase some women who do really cool jobs. And we're also doing some interviews with men as well. So thanks for coming on. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks for reaching out, Claire, and having me on. Absolutely. So can you talk to us a little bit about what it is that you do? Yeah, of course. So at the moment, I work at Palo Alto Networks in a cybersecurity role, which is more business professional, but I'm very interested in the technology side, probably broader how technology impacts humanity. And so I've ended up launching a podcast around that and just getting super involved in the community probably talks to my curiosity out of anything. <laughs> That's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, I've been in the IT industry and the tech industry for four and a half, five years now. Prior to that, I was an army officer in a combat engineering role and specialized in scuba diving, which is very cool. And I'm sure we'll go into a little bit more about that. And then I also managed to play a bit of professional soccer somewhere in there as well. So all those things shape me to where I've come today, Claire and um, a whole host of things that I like to get involved in these days. That is a pretty coloured background. And I think <laughs> definitely something to be said about, you know, working in a, in a male dominated environment <laughs> for you. Totally. Yeah, well, certainly Army was. Soccer as well. I mean, tech, IT, pretty male dominated. But it, it makes me think that, I mean, most industries probably are male dominated because it was only 40, 50 years ago, the first woman was able to run a marathon, right? So only really in our generation are we starting to see more of this conversation and be socializing diversity and inclusion topics and talking to the value of women in the workforce and things like that. But, you know, it certainly wasn't the case, particularly in my mother's or my grandmother's era. So there's probably a lot to be said about that as well. Oh, yeah, look, and same for me. Look, I grew up in Ireland, so we were even, like, further behind on some of these things. But yeah. it's, it's really our generation that are the first ones who can really kind of come out and work freely in that same, in a way that wasn't possible really before. Yeah. Um, and I know for you, speaking of being the first, you were the first combat scuba diver who was yeah. in the Australian Army. Yeah, I had the opportunity to become a diver, combat diver in the army. And it was really funny because I was approached on my specialist course to do the dive course. And I was like, yeah, that sounds fun. And then the instructor looked at me and was like, Gabe, you'll be the first female to do this. I was like, yeah, cool, let's do it. <laughs> so probably a bit of naivety, too casual, all that sort of thing. But yeah, I came through the army at a time where General David Morrison, who was the chief of army in that period, he came out very publicly and said, we're opening up combat roles to females. If they prove the aptitude physically, mentally, emotionally to be able to do the roles as a male counterpart. And he basically said to the entire defense force, you can either get on board or get out of the way. So that really set the tone. I think, again, leadership does really set the direction for a lot of things in an organization, no better than the Australian army to prove that out in such a catalyst moment for opening combat roles. And then I was able to take the opportunity with both hands and trained really hard for it because it's a very arduous course, pretty taxing. Like we did on the three to four month dive course, we would be diving two to three times a day for five days a week. And a lot of the time we would finish a night dive at about midnight or 1 a.m. And we'd be back up at about six to start PT again and get into the next day of diving. So by the time Friday rolled around, I was literally sleeping for like 13, 14 hours because there's just no mercy at all in the army. And I can't was, even imagine that. I've done my like Paddy yeah. events course nice. and like three days <laughs> you're exhausted. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And diving takes it out of you as well because there's a lot of pressure and atmospheric pressure that comes in the ocean in the ocean and as you dive at certain depths. And not only that, you know, a lot of the time we're carrying a lot of heavy equipment. Army diving, combat diving involves either construction or demolitions underwater. So usually have a host of equipment or very large bulky cylinders, one or two cylinders on your back and climbing up and down ladders and doing body recovery underwater and all sorts of stuff. So definitely a big experience in my life. Talk, taught me a lot about women in the workforce, taught me a lot about myself and character, a lot about leadership and 
yeah, certainly an experience that has shaped me today. That sounds intense because I know even on with normal dive gear, <laughs> getting up that ladder, especially if it's choppy, is like I know, crazy. right? Yeah, it's we'll have to go for a dive together, Claire. <laughs> it is, yeah, we'll have to. Um, although I'm definitely it. not at your level, so we're gonna have to baby one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> easy one. Nice. Um, so you mentioned like obviously a lot about leadership, and I agree with you. I think culture change has to come from the top down and has to really be promoted. But why is it that you think we see, and look, I'm in tech as well. I've been for 10 years, multiple regions and countries, and it's across all industries. We see this huge disparity in not just gender, but all diversity. Um, as my, one of my friends said in a previous interview, if you look at the boards, as you get higher and higher, it just gets whiter and straighter and maler and taller. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the same with the VC funding ecosystem. So like, why do you think that we see that massive disparity? Well, my thoughts are that it's just status quo at the moment. And there's been generations of it just always being dominated in that fashion. So it takes a long time to not only build out over the years, so that a female or someone that's neurodivergent or whichever other characteristic you could put in there that's different from the status quo to come through the ranks. So I think that take, that plays a big factor. The other thing too is I do think the really innovative disruptors, new emerging companies, potentially people that are looking to just rethink those first principles or disrupt the, or disrupt the status quo are looking to do things really differently. And so I, I personally feel like I'm observing that start to creep in, but you're right. You know, the general landscape is you see very much the same sort of persona in a lot of those ranks, but yeah, potentially it's looking at the opportunity that always comes with challenges or limitations and saying, if we want to do something differently or have a competitive advantage, perhaps we do really disrupt the status quo and think differently about doing it. Um, and potentially we'll start to see that a lot more. And especially as you spoke about at the start, Claire, you know, our generation is really pioneering a lot of this stuff and we might see it in our life. I think we will see it in our lifetimes and diversity on boards. And I've had personal friends in the industry, you know, very senior IT leaders, CEOs of tech companies say to me, I purposefully wanted a, to appoint a, a, a female on my board of directors. And I think there's a few examples of that happening at the moment. And I do promise we'll see. I'm sure we'll see a lot more promising, you know, um, emergences of this happening more and more in the future. I think so. And I think, look, when I talk to even like both men, women, everyone, and like I mentioned earlier, but like I meet tons of people, like I've worked in account management for 10 years. So I meet multiple contacts in multiple companies in different industries, different backgrounds, education, class, you know, nationalities, everything. And kind of the resounding feedback in general is that the kind of equal working where there's more parental leave for men, there's more leadership roles for women, you know, there's just that more equal work at home is kind of the way most people seem to want to move forward. Mm -hmm. And maybe I live in a very large echo chamber, but that does seem to be the kind of what people of our generation seem to want. They seem to want that diversity. Yeah, definitely. I, I would say as well, like some of the most brilliant operators I've met, particularly in the business world, you know, have been senior women. And I think there's something to be said for the fact that men, women, different characteristics, you know, bring different psychometric profiles, different ways of thinking. And we all score different on, again, those psychometric spectrums and those profiles. So. I just think the value of teamwork makes a dream work. And if you can work out how to bring people together to have very harmonious and complementary strengths in the ways of thinking, in the ways of doing things, I just think you get a way better outcome, particularly in business. 100% agree. And like, even you think about it, like in your personal life, how often have you been planning something and a friend of yours puts their hand up and goes, hey, have you thought about this? And you go, oh, uh, yeah didn't think of, that didn't occur to me so if you've got 10 people who all have the same thought process there's going to be a whole lot of gaps where stuff just didn't yeah. occur to them and you exactly. don't want that as a business leader I think you don't want that for your business because that's where you're going to lose market share right you're going to a competitor is going to think of it they're going to yeah yeah and business at the end of the day is about people 
like a lot of things in the world. I mean, all of it is, right? The rise of machines and AI, like we can go on a whole nother episode about that, Claire. But you think about, you know, creating those environments where people can, or businesses can have those competitive advantages because of the group of people, particularly at a leadership level. We know the things around psychological safety and how you build high performing teams. There's endless examples you can draw out of defense or special forces, you can draw out of sports, you can draw out of the biggest and best companies in the world as to how they do that. And at the end of the day, that's not an example of just the one person that looks the same as everybody else in the room. They're examples of very, very particular differences amongst people and how to actually mesh a, a team together that is always going to look very different because everybody individually is very different. So I think that's where the secret source is as you build those high functioning and high performing teams at whichever level. 100%. And just leading on from that, like what made you want to kind of get involved with the GU or join up here? Yeah, well, you reached out, Claire. I thought it's great to get involved in the community. I love to see any sort of community groups and particularly the leadership you're taking in building something like this. So absolutely, like always reach out no matter within a group, in-person events, online, whatever it is, I think we're all spoiled for choice these days. So appreciate everyone tuning in and bringing attention into GU, but also you know the in-person meetups you've been building and particularly the vision you explained to me at the start around where you want to take it and just the value to the community, I think is really special. So the more we can do that amongst a group, I think the better. Love that. And 100%, we're just trying to do something a little bit not quite different it was just it was born from like look a part of about eight thousand women in tech organizations but they cover massive geographical areas often global so finding anyone who actually lives and works near anywhere near me can be a bit of a challenge so we're trying to create those more local community groups in different areas and just make sure that people are actually able to connect on a meaningful level as opposed to just you know oh yeah we've, we've matched up these people and you know, my, I said it earlier, my mentor would be in like New York. And I didn't see yeah. it. So it's like, I mean, it's, it's not unhelpful. It's not like it's so crazy. difficult with the time zones, isn't it? Yeah. It's not, <laughs> yeah. not great. It's not the easiest <laughs> thing to manage. Um, yeah. And on a uh, slightly more personal level, what's something people might not know about you? Might not know about me. I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's not known. I think depending on how much you pay attention, you can probably draw a conclusion that like I'm a, I'm secretly a bit of a nerd. Like I love reading and just being a homebody. I'm naturally very extroverted in my personality. So, you know, I get the energy socializing, but I just love the downtime and time alone. Like I, and especially as someone that speaks a lot about technology and things like that too, I'll always switch off my tech on the weekend. So I think that might be a little unsuspecting for people who might interact with me daily, but don't sort of know what that private life entails as well. To be fair, I do find that also surprising, <laughs> switching well, off. There you go. Most people don't switch off <laughs> the deck on the weekend. Yeah, oh, there you go. That's nice. a cool one. And if someone's watching this and they're looking at you kind of going, oh my God, she's done all this stuff and like she's got to where she is and like, I want to do that. I want to be like that. What piece of advice would you give them? Yeah, there's probably a few things. I would say it starts with self-awareness and just understanding the way that you're wired uniquely. It's a lot of the themes we've spoken about in leadership and diversity anyways, but most importantly, at an individual level, we're all very different. Everything that makes me tick is probably different to what makes you tick, Claire, and things drive me in different ways. So having that self-awareness as to who I am as a person helps has helped me craft and build my experiences and my direction in life. So that self, self-authoring, self I would say, is probably the most critical part of life, in my opinion, because it's it's really like when you can see something and you, you can become it, of course, but, you know, everyone's life journey is really different. So that's going to come in different flavours for different people. The other really big thing for me is I always want to be not only the contributor but the leader the person in social groups that are also like, I want to be doing things that make a big impact and have a very remarkable and profound impact on the world long term. But I want to do that at the same time as being someone that's very kind to others and kind to myself. And I think the more it's like positivity and optimism, but it's just the way you treat other people and the values and the respect for others, particularly in a capitalist world where it can be hyper competitive. 
and pretty cutthroat at times. I think the more that we can build together and have that community focus and be kind to one another, I think the further that we can go, not only in teams and companies, but as humanity globally as well. So I think if we all did that, the world would be a better place. And I definitely encourage people to take a look at, of course, the self-authoring piece, the impact you want to have, which will be different. But then how do you activate other groups and, you know, do something special and remarkable with people and build strong relationships along the way as well? Amazing. Thank you for that. And that's no just about time for us. Thank you so much for coming on. That was fantastic. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Claire. And if anyone is listening, I'm always up for a LinkedIn chat or reach out or say hello and potentially might even see you at the next meetup. Hey, Claire. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome.